quick video going over my Mazda Miata kind of all the parts that I got on it and a quick little old review of how it sits today yeah before we get started I'll give you a quick rev so you hear how it sounds it's got an NB exhaust on it a couple NB subframes So I'll give you a, a rundown of the exterior, jump inside, and then pop the hood, and give you a look of the uh, the engine bay. When I first started building this thing back in 2016, I started with the drivability and the mechanics. And then once uh, it started driving well, I moved on into the interior. Once the interior was comfortable and in a state that I was happy with, I moved it to the exterior. I just had some pizza, so I'll be hiccuped in a bit during this. The, uh, yeah, once the interior got to a state that I was happy with, I moved on to the exterior. And uh, the exterior just recently, maybe at the start of this year, got to a point that I was happy with. It's missing some parts. This is going into storage here soon. Uh, the winters in Canada can be quite grueling, so the fiberglass uh, wing, the garage very alpha spoiler, and the carbon fiber drop trunk are things that are just not going to stay on the car for the winter. Uh, I'll start with the wheels, I suppose. It's one of the first things that I put on this car uh, back in 2016. It's uh, a pair of 15 by 7 RPF 1s. It was originally wrapped in 185 BF Goodrich Sport Comp 2s. It's now running 225 RT660s, which uh, have been used quite a bit. They've uh, taken four or five track days so far, probably five or six actually, because uh, first track day I didn't push it too hard. Second track day, I put on uh, Hawk pads in the front and flat spotted my passenger front, moved it to the rear, did a track day like that, and then I did two here near the end of the season. So, is that five? I think that's five days with the 660s. Um, they still have some life, but they, uh, they bounce like a motherfucker, uh, being that they have flat spots on the passenger side. So anything over 75, 80 miles per hour ends up getting a little bit uh, uncomfortable. The new fender cuts front and rear uh, aren't going to be staying forever. The rears I quite like, but the fronts, um, I've never given them the time of day to install properly. Um, and 
Uh, they like to come loose at the bottom. It doesn't help that my fenders are beat, right? And the fitment is uh, whack. So the body lines are no good. And they're starting to rust at the front. So they don't, um, they don't fit to the bumper nearly as well as they should be. See on this passenger side here that it's completely um, rusted away and has uh, pulled itself apart. Passenger side's flapping in the breeze here. I don't know if we can get in there and see well or not. But the uh, got um, Peco strong arms in there, and underneath the car, I got some flying Miata rain rails. Or, sorry, not rain rails, chassis bracing. And the Bomex mirrors, which are the only mirrors that I would run on my car. Those uh, Valtoni and uh, Bullet style, and the, the uh, Garage Make Corn, they're just not my style. I think they're a bit too vintage for the chassis. Probably one of my favorite additions to the exterior would have to be this uh, Jetstream hardtop spoiler. It's um, the only hardtop spoiler I would run. The, I couldn't bring myself to to run a eBay or Project G style. I think they're a bit too hot boy, and they really wouldn't go with the the aesthetics of the overall build. The Jetstream piece is far more streamlined and frumpy. And it's kind of the look I like. The uh, keeping in line with jet stream parts would be these carbon fiber door handle covers, which are just like a stick on piece. But for having a black car, not having a big silver uh, handle on the side of it, it cleans up the look. It'll be nice once the front end's painted to match the rest of the car. The, uh, the hardtop's also got these garage very uh, rain rails, which are actually a really uh, nice livability piece. The, um, if you drive your car often, having rain rails on the hardtop is actually a, a nice thing to have. It stops uh, the dripping that tends to to land on your on your forearm when you're when you're resting your arm on the sill. Uh, window up or not cracked. The uh, garage very pieces continue to the rear to where I have a garage very finish panel. The, uh, got their Daihatsu light stuffed in there that I, I finally wired up. Yeah, I hadn't been running it for a while. It was just kind of in there as a placeholder. I've got these handmade tail lights fitted to the panel which were a piece that came out of Las Vegas um, they come off of uh, much higher end cars than a Miata but uh, they fit and I think they look great the um, inside this finish panel also are these um, cheap eBay um, BMW 7 series replacement taillight housings they look very cheap and uh, it takes a bit of a modification to fit them, but they're very standard and um, they offer a tremendous amount of light output. The carbon fiber drop trunk and uh, garage very alpha spoiler, as I had mentioned, are off the car. And with the front end and the way this car is looking, I actually don't mind the OEM uh, trunk, but it's not staying. The, uh, can't wait to get my my trunk set up back. There's not really a whole lot more to the outside here apart from of course the uh, RS active front end which was um, really a holy grail piece for me. Like a magnum opus to really, uh, to really finalize the, uh, the build. Yeah, this is a piece that I had dreamed of for a long time. And I'm uh, quite happy that I was finally able to get my hands on a, on a kit. Yeah, it sports AutoZam AZ1 headlights that I made my own custom brackets for, as well as JDM AutoZam 
AZ3 turn signals, which have uh, dual bulbs in them. It has a turn signal section uh, on the right and a daytime running lamp on the left. I'll turn them on and let you see how that looks. See the tail lights. Take a step into the grass here. It's a bit too bright for you to see the output, but there's the BMW license plate lights. Turn on the hazards, which is a rev limiter modern piece. I believe they're manufactured by Garage Bistro. So if you uh, contact uh, Garage Bistro on Facebook, I'm sure you can get them for a bit cheaper. Although Adam from Rev Limiter is uh, a nice individual to buy pieces from. There's the turn signals. More up close up. Well, there's not much more going on with the exterior, so I'll hop in and uh, start pointing out what's going on in the interior. Early on, I got these Forever door cards from the States. I think I sourced them off of eBay. If they're still sold there anymore, I'm not sure, but they're cheap pieces and they're actually very well made. The, um, they're an ABS plastic, as you can see in the corner here, where I did a pretty bad job at wrapping. Um, I went to the fabric store and got a, a red leather to, to put on here. You can see they've been a bit beat up over the years, but yeah, I'll replace them with something a bit more conventional. Uh, down the road, I'm thinking uh, an all black door card with um, a red stripe either on the top or some other design closer to the OEM. Um, I'm not sure what edition. Here, let me turn these hazards off. I'm not sure what edition they came from, but there was a roadster that had um, the speaker grill and then some piping. Um, and I think uh, the shape of those door cards look quite nice so I'll try to replicate that design but without the speakers. The, um, the window cranks have been replaced uh, so they're new plastic and I, I think that's actually a nice thing to do. It's, uh, it looks a lot nicer than the, um, the previous owner who was trying to take them off with a screwdriver from the front. They, uh, they were pretty banged up. These uh, standard Moss Miata parts um, that are on the car would be like these door poles, which I'm not a huge fan of, but for the price of them and um, and what they are, they're much nicer than the OEM grab handles. Allows more space for the occupants also. The door cups are carbon Miata. Um, I was never much of a fan of carbon fiber, but it's grown on me in the last few years. The door handles will eventually be replaced with uh, M2 Reproduction Pleasure Garage pieces. I'm just not exactly ready to spend that kind of dough on door handles right now. I'll step on in. And you can see that I have these uh, carbon weasel HVAC carbon fiber rings. The rings stick on with a little bit of adhesive and uh, you have to trim them to fit the uh, these deeper ones uh, the, there's such a tight clearance that you're gonna have to sand them down matching uh, the kind of glossy black look is this uh, pleasure garage hazard switch that I had mentioned earlier 
and uh, I got those from Rev Limiter along with this HVAC control panel which is a burnout piece and the matching burnout gauge cluster uh, keeping in tune with replaced uh, OEM pieces was uh, a new gauge meter plastic surround uh, my old one had um, some burnt UV some kind of, I, I imagine the UV burnt it as well as a new rear view mirror which was also had some bubbling in it either from water or UV damage Got some 10x connections up here um, no, I, I screwed in for the full-size tunnel cover that I sport in the summertime. And I've done some DIY modding, like uh, added this, this interior light switch to the side of the tombstone, where this plate cover sits, as well as a, a Android tablet um, in the center, which is non-functional. When I first got this car back in 2016, I did some Hot Boy stuff to where I uh, ran a 5.1 uh, speaker system uh, from a computer and had the the sub box um, where the AC and blower fan was. And the controller popped out of this panel and was right here, like with the tuning knobs. And then I had a a speaker adhesive on this piece um, one in the center where the HVAC was on the passenger side attached to the glove box so it would drop down and then uh, two in the rear where the um, that hole is I, I, I put a screw through it and um, you can't see it but uh, we all know the hole that I'm talking about um, I guess while we're back here I'll show you the uh, Carbon Weasel seat toppers that I had installed. Uh, just like the HVAC, they'll take a little bit of massaging to get to fit. Sun visor delete plates. And because my hardtop latches rattle, I have a little bit of uh, heat shrink in here to kind of stop the metallic noise. It actually does, uh, does wonders. Really not a whole lot more to this interior, apart from maybe this Tomei shift knob, which is um, a nice knob since it's uh, like a more of a Delrin plastic. It um, doesn't get as cold in the winter. It's, uh, it's livable, it's something that you can, you can use every day. And uh, attached to this is a Miata Roadsters short shifter, uh, the OEM spec, short and not the tall angled one. Uh, it's a very tight shifter. This is a um, this is a great addition to uh, anyone with a roadster. Uh, Bill from the Auto Roadsters is uh, out of California, and he makes some some tremendous pieces for the uh, for these roadsters. Uh, the steering wheel, as you may have seen, is not standard. This is a cipher piece, uh, which also comes out of California. It's an OEM direct replacement. Uh, so you just take off your airbag, remove the wheel, install this, and put your airbag back in. It's the uh, same uh, diameter as stock, but it keeps, uh, but it gives you a flat bottom and uh, some nice ergonomic grab points for if you want to do uh, 10 and 2, uh, 9 and 3, or if you uh, want a single hand drive down below. It's, uh, it's a very comfortable steering wheel. Some say it looks a bit ricey, but to me, um, uh, removing the airbag, having a boss kit with exposed hardware is ricey. So this is actually my preferred steering wheel for the Miatas, and like the Bomex mirrors, is the only piece that I would have on my car. Um, my original steering wheel uh, was uh, broken so the rubber would uh, spin at the top. So this was a, a nice addition. It costs about as much as a keys wheel, Right, so it's a bit of an investment, and I don't think they're actually available anymore unless they're out of stock last time I looked. But this Cypher steering wheel is a great piece. I, I'd strongly recommend it. I've got some standard Moss Miata um, pedal caps. Um, 
or whatever. There's really nothing special. And uh, I'll pop the hood here and show you the engine bay. I'll forewarn you. It's kind of hard to look at. It's a bit janky, but um, you know, it's really up here. Let me grab my stick. Yeah. The door is going to be locked. Just got some parts sitting in here for the winter for storage room. It's a racing beat fiberglass tunnel cover. If uh, I don't rock it too much, but I got it for 40 bucks, so whatever, I'll keep it. Right, this is my table saw push stick that uh, I use as a hood prop. So let's get this hood open and show you the monstrosity that I got inside here. I hate pod filters, so please uh, excuse the fact that I'm running one. The original air box doesn't fit the hood, it doesn't have enough clearance. So instead what I did was I pushed the intake piping back and down and uh, I used um, that ribbed uh, tin aluminum HVAC dryer vent to connect the OEM piece to the throttle body. It was leaking some air and uh, jumping the revs, so I uh, wrapped in some electrical tape and <laughs> this aluminum HVAC um, flex fix uh, dryer vent tape, which is uh, some pretty ghetto shit, but it works, right? So the uh, maybe eventually I'll pick up a um, Rev9 air intake or a CX racing one or even a uh, shit, who makes it? Dark Additives makes this little snorkel that goes down here. Um, but the, I'm trying to remember, Nap, Nap Motorsports makes a, a little uh, piece of inlet piping that would, that would uh, probably work a lot better than what I have going on right now. Got a Koyo rad stuck down here, which is uh, hung on, which is stringed together rather. Oh, it looks like a, uh, this piece is, is snapped off, and that's why my, my rad's kind of floating in the breeze here. So it's really just this one strap of mechanics wire that's holding my rad up right now. <laughs> and uh, underneath this racing dog, track dog racing uh, panel, there's um, this monstrosity of welding that I have going on to, uh, to fit this front end. As, uh, you have to cut out your core support and uh, well fuck you got to cut out a lot of metal I have uh, a bucket and a half a uh, five and a half or a five gallon bucket full of uh, metal scraps that we've cut off the front end to fit this uh, to fit this bumper I engineered some uh, headlight brackets for these AutoZam AZ1 headlights they um, they're adjustable so you can uh, set the the height of the beam and uh, the tilt of them the, uh, Since they're JDM lights uh, the beam is um, uh, pointing into uh, traffic So you can see that this one is adjusted um, a lot more than say the passenger side This uh, engine bay is kind of cobbled together, as I was saying. So the uh, the intake pod here is uh, held together with uh, various assortments of zip ties, which keeps it away from the exhaust manifold. I've uh, done some pretty nasty wiring work because uh, the brittle uh, the 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 wires get quite brittle going into this math connection, uh, and then my coil pack is kind of the same thing uh, re-pigtailed um, connections and uh, a whole slew of zip ties kind of holding it up and of course my signature mechanics wire bracing holding it together I'm missing one of my Mishimoto um, 
heater core hoses. Uh, this is the one that blew up on me the one day, which caused some rust, uh, rusty water to fly everywhere. The other one I've since sacrificed for my blow-by tubing, which is another ghetto fix. This uh, valve cover that I splurged way too much money on came out of Texas. It's a really nice, well powder coated piece with uh, AN fittings welded on, but AN fittings are out of my price range. So instead I twisted on these Mishimoto heater core rad, silicone rad hoses and cut them so that I could stuff my PCV valve in there and use some some uh, some uh, OEM uh, pieces to ultimately get it back to the intake. And the rear one is the same ordeal, however I have a hose clamp pinching a smaller hose which routes underneath my charcoal canister and eventually under the intake and into <laughs> this port. So uh, don't copy what I got going on, it's far too ghetto. The charcoal canister is um, still being used, but it's just being moved down to where the washer bottle used to be. Yeah, I reinstalled the, the wiper uh, motor and uh, at least the first linkage uh, to set up a mono wiper. I really don't like the way the wipers sit on the RS Active front end. It's a bit too obtrusive. Since you can't see the hood anymore from the passengers or from the driver's seat, uh, it's nice not seeing uh, wiper arms. Um, though it's it's clearly in view, it's not when you're driving. Yeah, a nice piece that's stowed away down here is this Mad Five dipstick. The uh, as we all know, the Miata dipstick gets a bit brittle and is notorious for breaking. So this Mad Five piece is a nice touch. There's, uh, there's really not much going on in here though, apart from perhaps uh, the, the steering rack has been um, uh, taken apart, uh, the hydraulic rings being cut off, and I've welded the pinion. So the, uh, the power steering has been since converted over to a manual rack. I didn't get any uh, plugs, I simply uh, RTV'd the open holes and, uh, and sent it. Right, which is uh, good enough. So yeah, that's all that's really going on here. The uh, these coilovers are um, TN. Uh, they're adjustable, but my God, how are they so old? That um, I don't know if they're even that old, but the, they're not. They're not really adjustable anymore. They're seized to whatever they're set at. I've never touched them, so um, I don't know. It tracks fine. I'm sure the more professional racer would be able to tell that they're they're off, but I don't seem to care. The, uh, I had an, a BP4W in here earlier in the season, but the motor blew up because I starved it of oil on the track. I'm sure it's uh, salvageable by all means. It's just uh, it's got a nasty tick, and the, uh, for a BP4W to tick, um, that's not normal. So the uh, I'm back to my old tried and trusty. NA8 motor, which, you know, it ticks as well, but it's supposed to tick, and, you know, fucking tick away, tick away. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's all I got going on here. The, uh, this is my Mazda Miata. It makes me happy. I love this car. Hope you guys liked it, too. The, uh, more will come in the future. Um, I'm looking to see, uh, probably get myself a Ferrari f430 diffuser um, if you search on the ferrari form pages uh, by time to time uh, one of the guys will take off their oem fiberglass uh, spoiler uh, splitter rather if you check the ferrari form pages from time to time uh, the guys will remove their oem uh, fiberglass diffuser uh, for a carbon fiber piece and you're able to source one for a reasonably reasonably uh, low price um, beyond the, the F430 diffuser 
uh, perhaps a set of garage very flare corner corner flares i think that'd be a nice piece to have um, i'm not into the project g corner flares um, uh, there's their new makes a set uh, that that uh, keeps with the stock body line but it's very aggressive and kicks out a ton i'm not sure i need this i think it would kind of uh, ruin the aesthetic but uh, the garage very piece will look great it uh, kicks down at the bottom, kind of like the, the GTR um, spats that you can buy. So here, let's drop this hood. Which, uh, still utilizes the, uh, the OEM latch. Yeah, it took quite a bit of work to get this thing fitted, but I think it was worth it to not have hood pins. All right. That's my Mazda Miata. Peace.